All right, Brian, so this must be what you're talking about with the plateau brush. I'm looking at these cylinders thinking, wow, that is, that is almost like a mere finish. Yeah, it's actually got some crosshatch in there. You can actually see the crosshatch. But what those plateau brushes are doing is they're knocking all these peaks off of the crosshatch. So these rings, these plasma molly rings are seating very quick and they don't have to knock off all these high peaks off of the cylinder wall. I see, so each, each ring in the, each line in the cylinder, that is something that on startup, the rings have to cut off Yes. For them to seal. If it hasn't been plateau brushed, what's happening is uh, it's taken like five and six pulls on the dyno in order for the rings to knock all this crosshatch high peaks off. Where you know, the plateau brushes, that's what it's and doing. And that sounds about right because when we put one of these motors in the car, they don't smoke at all. From the first fire up, we just put them on the dyno and pretty much after the first dyno pull, they're yeah. up on compression. Either the first or second pull, they're finding the, the rings are seating that quick because of the plateau brush. That's awesome. And you also have a lot less ring drag too. So what happens when you soak a bunch of oil around this ring gland area, it'll actually hydroplane on the bore and the rings won't want to seat. Ah. So what oil needs to be on the cylinder wall is going to get thrown on the cylinder wall when you first crack it off. So it's not a good idea to soak this in a coffee can of oil or put a bunch of oil around the rings and then line them up and clock them. So I'm not using anything actually. So do you care about the clocking of the rings in relation to one another at this point? I, I do. When I get ready to put the piston into the bore, I'm going to clock them. And how do you clock them? Just opposed to each other? Yeah, just so they're not lined up. Um, there is some trade secrets about that type of stuff as far as if you're clocking it over over a valve relief or something because it's, it's very thin through there. So. Uh, you willing to give up a few of those trades? Uh, hell secrets? yeah, I'll kind of give you an idea. I'm actually clocking it uh, opposite of each other. And then on the ring pack, I'm, uh, I'm clocking it here and here on the, on the oil rail. So that's pretty much uh, how it's going to go. So I try to keep some of the assembly lube off this parting line area. If you kind of see me when I'm putting the assembly lube on, I'm trying to keep this as clean and dry as possible just so you get a good crush between the cap and the, and the rod. So... Unline that up a little bit. We got number one slug here, so we're gonna uh, tap it. Hear this when I say that your life don't get no playback So just move on and stay back to the what you do Hear this when I say that your life don't get no playback So just move on and stay back to the what you do So I noticed, Brian, when you're putting these pistons in, that you are turning the crankshaft so that it's in the lowest position. Why not just have the crank at the top position? Um, I'm clocking the, the rod journal down to give me more access. So okay. when I first knock the piston in, the rings come into the bore, I still have room and the rod's not going to come down and nick the crank. I see. So you can make sure you don't get any scratches in there? Yeah. It? Can't be nicking the crankshaft. So bring it down to its lowest position, then knock the piston in. I got you. And then I can kind of get my hand in there and guide it towards the, the connecting rod journal.
Okay, I noticed that you were actually able to pull that piston in from the back side. And uh, it must not be that hard to pull with these rings that are on this piston. Yeah, I mean, these are low tension rings. They're ductile iron. Uh, they're really, they're, they're not trying to bore the block. So there's less friction. Does that make more power when you have less friction? Less there? friction means more power. So that's why it's real critical on that plateau brushing and get these rings to seat and not putting a bunch of oil around the rings when you assemble the engine. Because uh, it's just going to hydroplane on that bore. So a lot of things are against you when you are soaking that thing up with a bunch of oil. So, like I said, it's just going to hydroplane on that bore because they're not like an old school Chevrolet where it's a thick ring and it's pushing a lot of pressure against the cylinder wall. So, don't be soaking it with a bunch of oil when you assemble the engine. Gotcha. So, what torque are you putting on these rods to keep them in place? I'm going to go 40 and then 50. So, I'm going to torque it in a couple sessions here. Is that what ARP recommends? Yes. With ARP lube also is critical, you know, it'll give you two specs. It'll give it to you with motor oil, and then it'll give it to you with uh, ARP lube. Now I've heard about ARP and this new lube that they have. Is it an ultra lube? What's the difference? Yeah, that new blue lube that's coming is, uh, they kind of done some homework on it and it's not holding as much torque as it's supposed to be. So they're wanting you to run the old lube until they've uh, got the new formula fixed. Okay, so we're running the previous generation. Yeah, we're running the first generation uh, ARP lube. Okay. So what is that red dot that you're putting on there, right? That's just telling me that uh, the rod and main has been torqued and uh, when the tech gets it, um, you know, if it doesn't have any red paint on it, it hasn't been torqued. Oh, okay. So just move on and stay back to the what you do. Hear this when I say that your life don't get no playback. So just move on and stay back to the what So, Brian, when you were putting these pistons in, I noticed you were having a little issue with getting the, the piston in the cylinder board. What, what was that from? Um, I am running a couple different styles of ring compressors to collapse the rings around the piston to knock it into the bore. Um, the reason the issue is, is I'm not running a lot of chamfer on the cylinder itself. So chamfer, what do you mean there? Well, the block has been surfaced and it's been bored. So then you start losing this, you get a real sharp edge on the cylinder wall. I gotcha. So I can't come in here and put a large 45 degree chamfer on the cylinder because look how close the cylinders are married together here. I got gotcha. you. So that brings us to... And that's when the head, you want the head to clamp on here and seal between these two Yeah, cylinders. and I, I mean, you're talking 100 mil here, you know, very thin finish to uh, try to get the head gasket to hold. So it brings us over to our dart and sleeve block. Um, I could probably bring, bring some calipers over and we could measure and show the customer how much thicker this is through here. Okay, and so what we're trying to do with this block is, this is a, a good block that we sent to Darton. They, board it out and then put in a sleeve material in here. Now, they're telling me that this sleeve material is four times stronger than the material in the block. block is that right. true? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's probably a ductile iron. I don't know what type of metal it is, but it's very hard. So it's gonna take a lot of boost. It's not gonna expand and attract as much. Um, you can also see on the inside where the sleeve is uh, in this area here, you can actually see the dart and sleeve oh, inside definitely. there. So it does need a little more chamfering around the bore where the uh, connecting rod comes up through. And the hole up above is the sprayer hole. Oh, I got you. So now when you've seen these blocks crack, and it crack, they've cracked into the water jacket, where is that typically happening? And how is this extra material gonna keep that from happening? Well, what's happening is 
on your 1,000 horsepower, 900 horsepower cars, this cylinder wall is so close to each other, what we've almost it's doubled the thickness between the cylinder walls now. Right. So we got much more ceiling area here and a lot harder sleeve. Right. So I can actually get away with running a little more chamfer on the board, so it's going to be a little easier to walk the piston into so the board. So what about when you've seen the cracks? Where did the cracks The cracks from? are cracking through here. And we've only had one other engine that's, it's, we've had one crack through here and we've had one crack in the cylinder wall. I gotcha. So out of those two engines out so of... So this will solve that beyond, when we go beyond a thousand wheel horsepower. Yeah, we're, this, this should hold up well. Okay, awesome. Okay, so this block has been bored 20 thousandths over. So that means it's 20 thousandths larger than the standard bore. And what you're measuring is the wall to wall clearance. And so what is, so this number, we've, we haven't had any problems with this number until uh, over 900 horsepower. But we want to build an engine that can go over 1,000 horsepower. And not crack the cylinder wall and out. And not crack the cylinder wall out. So right. what is the, what have we got over here? So this block, that one's measuring about 137, 138 with the calipers, which this one's measuring at, at 231, 232. So that's a hundred thou. Yeah, you're talking almost a hundred thousandths thicker. That's a lot of meat that we've added in there. Yeah, plus a, a harder cylinder wall also. Okay, excellent. So that harder cylinder wall is going to benefit, the thicker cylinder wall is going to benefit. So yeah, because what we're looking to do on our stage four kits is move the power up to over, uh, at around a thousand wheel or over on our everyday driving cars. Nice. Yeah. Because everybody needs a thousand horsepower at the wheels yeah. all the time. <laughs>